Think back. Have you ever heard an apology from a Sri Lankan politician or at least something close to an apology from one of our public representatives? I don't think so. Now, the members of the former administration uh, led by President Mahindra Rajapaksa, who can be seen here, have been accused of a number of things in relation to fraud and corruption. None of them have co has come forward to apologize for incidents that had taken place. Members of the current government, who you can see here, these are just a few, they have never come forward to apologize for corruption that could have taken place within their administration. For example, take the bond scam. It's been about three years since the bond scam took place, but none of the current politicians have come forward to apologize to the nation to the, because of the damage that they caused through this daylight robbery. Now we know that there are two individuals who are in remand custody in connection to the bond scam. The courts have issued an arrest warrant for former governor of the central bank, Arjun Mahendran. But look back, think about the politicians who made statements in order to protect Mahendran and his associates. Look back at the statements made by our prime minister himself with regard to his affections, his um, closeness to the former central bank governor and how he took steps and made statements to protect his friend. Now, while Mahendran is being sought by officials to be questioned in court, the masterminds who are behind this entire bond scam, the masterminds who ordered people to make certain decisions in order to make the bond scam a reality, are still keeping their names out of the spotlight and the headlines through their actions. The question is, for how long? The head of the bond scam, the person who provided the political guidance for it, it was the Prime Minister who set up the legal and administrative environment necessary for the scam to be carried out. Arjun Mahendran has escaped with the blessings of the leader of the UNP. He is an individual who is well known internationally, so he can be taken into custody easily. We all know that the police in Sri Lanka were able to apprehend people like KP and others. So they should be able to arrest this individual too. This is our position. Who is the main rogue behind the central bank scam? Arjun Mahendran was the governor of the central bank. Where is he now? Whose friend is he? Ranil Vikramasinghas. Then we have Malik Samar Vikrama and Kabir Hashim. The governor of the central bank carried out the theft and fled. And now he is being protected by his friend. Isn't that so? Two small fry who were involved in the theft, Pali Sena and Arjun Loishas, have been locked up, but the mastermind is at large. The political masterminds who were behind the scam are still at large. This is the situation in the country. We must put a stop to it. This cannot be solved through a no-confidence motion alone. The law of the country must be enforced, and those responsible for this should go where they deserve to go. The small fry have been captured while the sharks and the political sharks are leading a life of luxury around the world. Is this the law of the country? Who is the thief? Or the more appropriate question in this case would be, who isn't a thief? Think about it. Has there been any punitive action against politicians or those affiliated with politicians uh, in connection to the crimes that they have allegedly committed? Where are those involved in the big deal? Udyanga Viratunga, former Sri Lankan ambassador uh, to Russia, see you here, is still missing. Now, this big deal uh, caused damages to the country worth around 7 million US dollars. Former Ambassador Jalia Vikramasurya, who is implicated uh, in connection to the purchase of a new building for the Sri Lankan embassy in Washington, he's out on bail, he traveled to the United States, and he's still in the United States uh, to our knowledge. Yet, uh, there were plenty of people who were taken to the FCID once this government came into power in 2015. But still, their cases, we do not know 
how, what progress has been made. What progress has been made after 2015 in connection to the murders of La Santa Vikramatunga, in connection to the murder of Wasim Tajuddin. So we do not see any punitive action being taken against politicians or those affiliated with politicians. And when things like this happen, one could think that there are two laws in this country, one for politicians and their affiliates and the other for the common man. Now it is in this backdrop that a no confidence motion was brought against the Prime Minister in Parliament. Now most of the accusations made in this no confidence motion per is pertaining to the Prime Minister's uh, alleged involvement in the central bank bond scam. How will the Sri Lanka Freedom Party react and vote in this no confidence motion? Let's uh, listen to some statements made by SLFP seniors in regard to this. I believe that on the 4th of April when the no confidence motion is taken up, the hopes and expectations of the people will be met. We believe that the members of parliament will act disregarding party divisions on this matter. In line with that decision, we will move forward with strength. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party is yet to reach a final decision on this no confidence motion. Following the President's arrival, the Central Committee will convene and it is possible that a decision will be made there. This will only come to light at the next meeting of the Central Committee. We submitted this to ensure its victory, not its defeat. A large group within the UNP has agreed to support this. On the matter of bringing a no confidence motion from within the government, we have the freedom to support or oppose what we wish. In this matter, we have an ethical duty to stand by the people and understand the realities of the country. Our Central Committee will make a decision within the next two days. This is a common decision that has been agreed to by our group and myself. Meanwhile, speaking to the BBC Singhala Service, State Minister Palita Range Bandara said there are several members of the UNP who are prepared to support the no-confidence motion. The State Minister noted that he could not divulge their names as it would be extremely dangerous to do so. Palit Rangi Bandara added that if even one name was divulged, people would chase after that person from today until the 4th of April. Those who will work in support of the Prime Minister when the no-confidence motion is taken up have already begun to receive gifts. We have been informed that bags of money are being exchanged at luxury hotels as out of the gifts for those who will support the Prime Minister during the no-confidence motion. This is not a secret. Out of the gifts for those who protect the Prime Minister. These are not my words, these are the words of a UPFA parliamentarian. How far will these individuals be able to protect themselves? If we are to believe the statements that are being made, then as we speak there could be exchanges taking place in order to secure power or to come into power. That is also something that should be considered. But the general public can't enter into such deals in order to save their lives. Uh, we have stringent laws in this country that deal with theft. That is why you get to hear certain stories here and then uh, with regard to children being punished for stealing mangoes or an innocent man being thrown in remand custody or jail for stealing a coconut. But as I said earlier, when you see things like this happening, one could very well think that there are two sorts of laws in this country. That is, uh, keeping this in mind, today the joint opposition convening a media briefing made this revelation. Once the active liability management bill is adopted, Parliament's financial oversight powers will be stripped and the Prime Minister will be able to take loans as and when he wishes. He will be able to deposit these loans in whichever account he wishes to and earn profits. No judicial action can be taken against him. We went before the Supreme Court because while this may not be unconstitutional, it violates parliamentary tradition and is harmful to the financial system. We also questioned it in the Sectoral Oversight Committee. President Mahindra Rajapaksa spoke to President Maitri Palasiri Sena. Accordingly, the bill was not tabled on Wednesday. It was to be postponed. Then the Prime Minister had come to the Oversight Committee and instructed for this to be adopted disregarding our opposition. It was adopted on Friday with much haste. The electronic system was also registered, a yes vote from Minister S.P. Disanayaka, who was not present in the chamber during the voting. 
Recently, the President had put forward a cabinet paper annulling the Committee on Economic Management which makes these decisions. The Prime Minister did not allow it. Even a grade 2 student can understand the arrogance of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is even disregarding edicts from the President. The only way this situation can be resolved if he is removed from the positions he holds. This is why the joint opposition put forward this no confidence motion. On the World Local News, the 44th convocation of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka was held in Colombo yesterday with Prime Minister Ran Vikramasinghe as the chief guest. President's Council, you are Silva was re elected as the president of the Bar Association. The last few years have seen the emergence of a hate culture, a hate culture that is being spread by the social media and at which the Muslims had been, unfortunately, at the receiving end. We want to ensure that the perpetrators are brought before justice, that we don't shield anyone. Now we have to take steps to ensure this does not grow, this does not expand. This cannot be done only through law. I will talk about the legal issues, but there must also be social action. Prime Minister also commented on the Cambridge Analytica fallout. I was reading recently the use of Facebook and how Cambridge Analytica used 50 million da data of 50 million people to influence the outcome of the US election. I must say Cambridge Analytica came and canvassed me also to get work from the UNP. Fortunately, we did not use the <laughs> services of Cambridge Analytica, but they, they have an office here. And how did they get caught? Because Channel 4 decided to ask them and then they came as a wealthy individual who was wanting to run for the presidential election in Sri Lanka. I'll be, I'll be quite interested to find out what are the names that they gave. For the kind of, but it's, it's that story. That we, but some of the things that were said there were said to us. So I have no reason to disbelieve Channel 4. But it shows the danger. Just within one month, we see what's happening in Sri Lanka, and then this whole story of Cambridge Analytica comes out. So there has to be some effective petrol. You heard the Prime Minister speaking about the aftermath of Cambridge Analytica.